Hello, everyone. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment. Somebody was asking about uh, when do you use autopilot, when do you not use autopilot, you know, what's the optimum time during an approach, should you use it in an approach, and all those other kind of uh, interesting questions about automatic pilot. So I thought what we would do is uh, do a little experiment today to sort of test to see, does it make sense to fly approaches by hand, or does it make more sense to fly them with the autopilot, and what happens on your approach when something doesn't go right? So let's go ahead and unpack all that one step at a time. So what we have here is we have two different approaches. Uh, we have ILS-28 left for San Francisco, and we have ILS-28 right for San Francisco. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fly an instrument approach. Now we're going to start by using the actual, uh, we're going to fly it by hand. And then what we're going to do is uh, partway down the approach, uh, when we get to probably about five nautical miles out, we're going to switch to a parallel runway. We're actually going to jump to the other runway. And uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to program in the initial ILS DME to 109.55, and then we're going to have a 111.7 on standby. Now, one thing you got to pay attention here is there's a lot of details we're going to have to get right, but we're going to experiment to see when we introduce the complication of needing that switch, how hard is it going to be to do by hand versus how hard is it going to be to do by actually running it in um, using the automatic pilot for it. So let's see if we can get this thing all set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my VOR and LOK here. LOC, I don't know what LOK is. Uh, we're going to go in here, we're going to do 109.55, which is going to be our initial ILS approach that we're going to fly. So that looks pretty good to me. Swap that sucker. And then on the other one, we're going to do 111.70. Uh, that looks good right there. So 109.55, 111.70 is going to be the other one. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our lovely HSI here, and we're going to program our HSI on a 284 course. So while we're presently in a 284 course, you can see the glide slope's a bit above us and we're a little off the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly this and uh, when my DME reads five, I'm going to switch to the other ILS approach and uh, see just how messy this is going to be for us. So uh, this should definitely be interesting to say the least. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Just get myself as uh, comfortable and relaxed as you possibly can and let's go ahead and unpause. All right, so my initial location here, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything ready. We're on the autopilot right now, just for the purposes of uh, kind of getting us steady for this initial portion of our journey here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, untrigger the automatic pilot. It's gonna honk at us like it always is. And uh, we're just gonna start flying our ILS uh, just like the way we need to. I'll even tip my head down just a little bit and make it a little bit easier for the folks following at home to kind of see sort of uh, all the shenanigans we're about to cause here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're doing about a dollar thirty, which is pretty quick. Uh, that's uh, slow enough for us to be safe. And I'm just gonna kind of proceed here. We're gonna hold uh, roughly this out now you can see that on my first click of uh, ILS is approaching in just a minute. We'll go ahead and start swinging to the left now. Uh, we can see that localizer bar start to kind of jump. And we can also watch the glide slope start to spin a little bit as well. And uh, of course, this is a uh, super duper fun to fly by hand while you're giving play by play. Uh, I've learned that's actually pretty challenging. Let's go ahead and drop the landing gear there. And let's go ahead and uh, do one of these. It starts to slow down. I could feel the uh, little, uh, we get that nice little nose heavy effect uh, when we put the landing gear down in this plane. It helps slow us down quite significantly. We're going to go ahead and hold level here in just a little bit. We're going to go bring in that first click of flaps. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my RPM there. And I'm going to go set my power for about 21 inches. There we go. Looks pretty good. Come to my left just a tiny bit there. All right, I'm liking that. I'm liking that's pretty groovy. All right, so there we go. We are now on glide slope, and we're a little to the left in the localizer. I'm going to start initiating a 500 feet per minute descent here, and I'll start going ahead and I'm playing with the trim game here, trying to get this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Microsoft trim, Microsoft trim. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start trimming that. Oh my gosh, Microsoft trim. How are you supposed to fly this plane in the real world if the trim is that bad? You basically would be screaming. Whoops. Go one click there. Looks good. All right, so we're right on localizer, and uh, we're basically right on glide slope, and uh, we're just watching our DME tick down now. So our current DME, if I look down, it looks like 11 miles out, and uh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we just need to kind of come to the right a little bit here. Again, we're flying this one by hand, so we've got everything nice and sort of trimmed out. It's looking pretty good. Glide slope diamond's looking pretty center. Our localizer diamond's looking pretty center, too. A key thing here is when you're flying any sort of approach, uh, try to do as little as you can with the actual approach itself. Uh, that's the key to being successful here. I'm going to come to my left just a little bit. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. About a 283 heading. It's a little bit of a crosswind, but nothing terrible here. It's San Francisco. It's, it's going to be challenging. We're still in glide slope, a localizer, and we're definitely getting pushed to the right a little bit here. So I'm going to come a little bit more to my left and I'll try to get ourselves uh, reacquired here. Uh, we're starting to drift just slightly high. Uh, nothing terrible, like I said, pretty minor so far. Looks good. I'm watching the DME tick down. Uh, we're at 9.7 on the DME. I'll come swing back this way a little bit. 
And I can see that the glide slope is slowly starting to sneak southward there. Uh, that just means that we need a little bit more descent rate, but that's okay. Okay, looking good. Watch my DME, we're at 9.3. We're coming pretty good. Glide slope's starting to stabilize a little bit. Localizer's starting to stabilize a little bit. This is the easy part of an ILS approach, by the way, uh, for those of you who don't fly these by hand often. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna swing to the left a little bit. Glide slope's perfect. Localizer, like I said, we're struggling to get that nice and centered, but that's not unusual. A little easier when you have the autopilot. It's a little more sensitive. There we go, we're right on localizer now. Uh, the glide slope is perfect. DME is 8.6. Everything's looking pretty good. Everything's fine. We're just watching those numbers tick downwards there, starting to glide towards uh, San Francisco International there, which, by the way, if you, are, you want to see something really, really funny, go on YouTube. Uh, San Francisco International MST3K. Uh, they actually tried to make a TV series out of it, and the uh, people over at Mystery Science Theater 3000 had one heck of a fun time tearing at anyone. Good times. All right, come back to my left a little bit. We're definitely oscillating along the localizer here. I'm doing pretty well with the glide slope right now. It's definitely a fingertip controls, fingertip controls. About 281, I'm just gonna let everything settle. I can see a little bit of the city going by on my left there. That's actually very common when you're doing instrument approaches in the real world, is you catch just a little bit of the ground and it tends to make you real nervous. All right, uh, we're down to 7.3. We're gonna cause our experiment to happen in a two nautical miles from now. All right, it's getting close. Oh boy, glide slope is still good. Glide slope is still good. Pretty much centered. We're definitely going to have to come to the right a lot more. Pull that nose up just a little tiny bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and center that out. Yeah, we're letting it get a little away from us, but that's okay. I just need to pay attention. 6.6. All right. That looks pretty good right there. Being much too aggressive here. I should be much more gentle. There we go. Nice. We're pretty much right on. Right on. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. We're just going to let the wind kind of drag us to the right a little bit. It's pretty good. There's 6.0. Glide slope is perfect. This requires all every brain cell I got left after a hard week of work. <laughs> all right, starting to drift a little up, but that's okay. It gets a little sensitive at this part of the journey. Five nautical miles. We're definitely drifting up. It's 5.3. Uh-oh, they've asked us to use another ILS. Let's do it. All right, let's see if we can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself uh, coming pretty far to the side here. I'm going to go ahead and center it. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Again, I'm flying this by hand. I'm not flying this with the automatic pilot. Come back to my right just a little bit there. Try to get us pentered. And yes, I do know there's bright lights, but that's not what I'm concentrating on right now. Come swing back to this way a little bit. Center us up. Nose down just a tiny bit. Whoop, bad time to get a loading lag. <laughs> All right, come to my right just a little bit. We're on glide slope. We are just slightly over localizer. All right, I would say that wasn't hard. I would say that was not hard at all. I'd say the most difficult part there was that little uh, glitch of lag that I got when we got a little closer and they had to load in the terrain. Speed is good. Um, we're definitely drifting. Oh, 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 there's the runway. Ha ha, we made it. So, okay, so let me put some comments on now. So um, first thing I noticed is um, it takes an enormous amount of concentration to uh, fly an instrument approach. Everybody knows that. That's why instrument approaches are so much fun. Uh, second thing, uh, when we had to fly the parallel runway there, it was actually not that bad. I thought it was going to be a little bit worse, but it turns out it was really not a lot of work at my point because of how far along we were on our journey there. Uh, we're actually still, we're drifting high here. Sorry. Now uh, come down a little bit. Nose up. Nope. Uh, one of the things that really helped us here that you probably observed was that getting our power set and our trim set and our flap set and everything kind of set nice and early there, they made it much, much, much simpler to transition into our kind of our approach phase. So I'm going to go ahead and set this thing on the ground, and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to fly the exact same approach we just did, but we're going to use the automatic pilot the entire time. And our interest here is going to be what happens when we transmit or translate transfer, that's the word we're looking for, from using the automatic pilots to uh, trying to get this thing down. So it should be very, very interesting to see. Let's go ahead and get over that lovely runway there. I'm just going to pull that power back nice and smoothly. And we're going to float a little bit, though. It's a bonanza. And we're going to play formation. Nose up. And we're down. Perfect. Let's see what happens when we do this with the autopilot. All right, we're in business. Let's do it. So what we're going to do now is do the same approach, but we're going to use the automatic pilot to help us out. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got everything locked in. You can see I've got my 109.55 ready to rock. You can see I have my localizer all set. You can see the automatic pilot is already on approach hold mode. And you can see that my DME is uh, starting to count itself down. You can also see our little glide slope position here as that continues to kind of tick down a little bit. So, so the experiment here is going to be what happens uh, when we try to make the transition between the two different modes. I'll actually give us a little more boost of power here. There we go. Get us moving here. So the very interesting thing here, like I said, is what's going to happen. And uh, that's, like I said, very, very interesting. My theory is um, because we don't have control wheel steering, uh, which is a video for another day. It's one of the greatest buttons you have, by the way. This guy right here, it is a magical button. Um, we're going to go ahead and see what happens without that. So I'm actually um, afraid we're going to have to try to jump in and kind of help this thing out a little bit uh, once we get a little bit closer. All right, so we've got glide slope captured. Uh, we have approach captured, and we have coupled, uh, which means we're good. And looking over on the right, I've got my three green lights, uh, which means we're safe for the descent here. I'll go ahead and pop in my first click of flaps, and I'm going to boost power up to about 23 inches or so. RPM is going to come up as well. So this is going to be the easiest part of the journey. And this is the part that I'm kind of enjoying because uh, I don't have to sit there and fight the controls and watch these little needles uh, kind of shake around on me the whole way down. I can basically enjoy the ride, uh, which is, I like that, I like that, I like that. So we'll skip ahead to where we get a little bit closer. All right, we're getting pretty darn close. I'm looking at my window now. Uh, it's a pretty bad weather here. So uh, we're 5.8. Uh, when we switch to 5.0, we're going to do the exact same experiment. Uh, the difference here is that we're going to go ahead and uh, attempt to do a frequency swap and then get ready to mash that button as fast as we've ever done in our life. Oh, boy. I don't like this. I don't like this. Control wheel steering would be our friends here. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so uh, we're in a world of hurt here. Um, we cannot locate that other approach at all. Um, actually, there it goes. We're starting to catch it. Okay, that's okay. All right, let's see what happens here. We're captured glide slope, which is fantastic news. As long as we have glide slope, things are okay. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're starting to drift a little low here. It's definitely struggling. There's the localizer. You've got to grab the localizer. Remember, at any point, of course, uh, we could have interfered here. Uh, one of the things I notice is that we're actually dropping below minimums here. If I don't interfere in a few seconds, uh, we're going to end up in the drink. Uh-oh. 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 All right. There's my interference. I'll wait to see what happens. Uh, we should recapture it in just a few seconds here. Once we capture it right there. There it is. The nose should come back down again. 3.3 to go. Uh, we can see we've uh, captured that pretty successfully. Our speed is still pretty good. We're ready for actually almost the next notch of flaps here. So that looks pretty good to me. That looks pretty good. Um, we've actually captured it pretty well. Uh, we definitely had a little bit of a challenge there at the last second that, that we need to be worried about. But if I look up my window, there's the runway. <laughs> All right, uh, let us discuss. So well, a couple things that we noticed there, and I actually found this to be kind of an interesting experiment, to be honest. Uh, the first thing I noticed, which I thought was valuable there, is uh, when you do change frequencies or lose contact with the ground, your aircraft will continue to descend. So uh, it's really critical to realize that approach autopilots, you have to approach the glide slope from underneath and not above, otherwise it will not work. And uh, you could actually see pretty clearly there kind of the danger of that not working for us. Uh, we could have kept descending right into the bay there, and that would have been pretty embarrassing, if you ask me, kind of a thing. So that's an interesting little thing that came out of this. Uh, hand flying the approach versus auto flying it, the autopilot flown approach was definitely a lot smoother. Uh, it was basically glued to it the entire way down, which is very impressive because that's hard to do in the real world. Usually the ILS is a little jittery and uh, this one was not jittery at all. It actually had no difficulty. So I guess this is what I would say. Uh, if you intend to ever use the autopilot for approaches, which is perfectly fine, it's nice and smooth, it's nice and buttery, uh, keep in mind if for any reason you lose that ILS frequency or you need to do that quick little parallel drop, hit the alt button, then fix the frequency, then hit the approach and you should be good to go. Enjoy.